Welcome to the webinar series on mainstreaming urban climate action, which includes four short webinars on concepts related to climate action in cities. This series has been developed by Terry in collaboration with the European Union International Urban Cooperation Program in India. This webinar module 2, titled Frameworks for Climate Change Adaptation and Mitigation in Cities, focuses on the strategies for mitigation and adaptation that can be incorporated into the urban development process towards resilience building. So let's begin. Climate change will adversely affect cities across the globe over the next century. And therefore, strategies that address the impacts of climate change are of vital importance. But before we delve into these strategies and frameworks, we need to first understand the key international policies and contexts that contributed to their development. International cooperation or collective action is essential for addressing the challenges faced due to climate change. Two milestone steps taken globally in this regard were the setting up of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or the IPCC that curates scientific and technical information for international climate action and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or the UNFCCC that facilitates global negotiations and decisions on various climate change issues. Two prominent outcomes of the annual climate negotiations at the UN Convention were the Kyoto Protocol of 1997 and the Paris Agreement of 2015. The Kyoto Protocol set binding targets for countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions for the period between 2008 and 2012, whereas the Paris Agreement sets out a global framework to limit global warming below 2 degrees Celsius in this century to gradually adapt to and reduce the impact of climate change. As a party to the Paris Agreement, India has committed to 35% reduction in emissions intensity of GDP below the 2005 levels by 2030 and promotion of energy efficient measures in the urban sectors such as buildings and transport. India's national and state action plans on climate change also support these initiatives through eight national missions such as the National Mission on Sustainable Habitat and the National Solar Mission. Even though India has national and state action plans for climate change, there is a need for action plans at the city level as cities generate majority of the global GHG emissions that contribute to climate change. At the same time, the population density and the concentration of economic assets also make them highly vulnerable to climate change induced disasters. Consequently, adapting to the climatic extremes and reducing the environmental footprint is key to sustaining cities in the future. Towards this objective, a climate change action plan integrates components of mitigation and adaptation for emission reduction and resilience building respectively. Climate change mitigation consists of actions that reduce GHG emissions either by limiting their release at the source or enhancing the sinks that absorb these gases. Planning for such mitigation actions begins with the development of a GHG inventory that documents and quantifies the emissions from different activities within a city. As one says, we can't manage what we can't measure. Creating greenhouse gas inventories is an important tool for cities to measure their greenhouse gas emissions. In this process, there are several steps which cities need to follow uh, in carrying out greenhouse gas emissions. For building a GHG inventory, cities first need to select an approach such as the established Global Protocol for Community Scale Greenhouse Gas Emission Inventories or the GPC Framework by WRI, C40 Cities and ICLEI for Emissions Reporting or the Common Reporting Framework by the Global Covenant of Mayors. 
Based on the selected framework, cities need to define the geographic boundary and identify the emission sources. When the emission sources have been quantified, cities can thus select strategies to reduce them. The emission sources of a city can be classified according to the different urban sectors or based on their geographical origin. The emission sources based on geographical origin are classified into scopes. Scope 1 refers to the sources located within the city boundary such as intra-city transport. Scope 2 refers to the grid connected sources such as grid supplied electricity or gas. And Scope 3 includes all other sources that occur outside the city boundary as a result of activities taking place within the boundary such as inter-city goods movement. The subsequent next step is the quantification of the emissions from these sources. Activity data multiplied by emission factor gives you the total emissions. Now the activity data comprises of quantitative measurement of the data which goes into your consumption part. For instance, in case if you need to calculate emissions from electricity, you need total units of electricity consumed in a household. So that becomes your activity data. You need to multiply this activity data with emission factors. Like in case of India, we, the Central Electricity Authority calculate emission factor for electricity as 0.82. So you can use this emission factor to calculate tons of CO2 equivalent and that is the unit for your total greenhouse gas emissions. After quantifying different emission sources, GHG inventories can be used for setting mitigation goals and selecting different strategies at the city level. Cities can strive towards the goal of net zero carbon or carbon neutrality, where the amount of GHG emissions released due to the city are offset by energy efficiency measures in different sectors or are absorbed by carbon sinks such as urban forests. One such example of a city-level mitigation strategy is the EU-funded Urban Low Emission Development Strategy of Rajkot City in Gujarat. Under this project, Rajkot implemented a number of mitigation strategies including the replacement of energy-intensive streetlights with energy-efficient LED lights and the installation of solar panels on the roof of a municipal school building thereby contributing to the overall emission reduction of the city. Now that we have a background on the strategies and frameworks for mitigation, let us delve into the adaptation frameworks and strategies. Adaptation is the ability of a system to be able to respond to the stimuli in the climate, the change that we are likely to experience and uh, therefore it helps us adjust to the related risks that we are talking about because of changes in the climate. Adaptation is largely of different kinds, it's anticipatory, it's reactive, it's planned, it's autonomous, it's public and private driven. How do we decide on what adaptation is needed is basically based on uh, risks and understanding of the risks and risks is largely a function of hazard, exposure and vulnerabilities of a particular region or a particular system that is likely to be experienced and to be able to address a combination of them are the measures that are basically framed. Adaptation is a continuous process that should keep evolving in response to the observed and expected climate risks. It should begin with an assessment of the climatic hazards and differential vulnerabilities of various urban sectors. Based on this assessment, adaptation strategies for different urban sectors should then be developed. For example, to evaluate the risk posed by climatic hazards such as flooding, a map of the city with the location of different buildings and infrastructure can be overlapped on a map indicating the low-lying areas to highlight assets that may be at risk. Subsequently, adaptation strategies such as flood early warning systems or zoning regulations 
can be adopted for addressing the climatic risks. Looking at rooftop rainwater harvesting in areas uh, which are experiencing water scarcity so that we can look at alternative sources of water, have more greener spaces, open and greener spaces that so that that can absorb the heat around and allow for more circulation. So there are many, many examples that basically uh, one can explore uh, across uh, the bandwidth to be able to address uh, the uh, related risks depends on the risks that city is likely to experience uh, and within the city different locations may be experiencing different kinds of risks. So what kind of adaptation can be basically uh, developed and implemented to be able to address those risks. City level climate action, including strategies for mitigation and adaptation, can slow down the onset of climate change and at the same time reduce its adverse effects on cities and infrastructure. Moreover, they also reap numerous long-term co-benefits such as improvements in public health, reduction in household energy usage and costs, and increase in the longevity of urban infrastructure systems.